to say we ain't got a voice, John, but I'll tell you what, we had a voice in there. And by God, it was magical. I suppose it. I came in 75 disappointed. This time it's made up for all them years. Brilliant. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades, and this country is not alone. All over the world, we're seeing the devastating impact of this invisible killer. It's important that we are honest with people about what might be happening in our economy. The OBR's figures suggest that the scale of what we are facing will have serious implications for our economy here at home. The full force from home, I think, is just as important because uh, the fans can't support us from home. It's not going to be supporters in the stands, and they're not going to be influencing the matches at the same same way they did before. We still have the best supporters in the championship. Coronavirus doesn't fear me. I'm a Fulham fan. <laughs> Hi, you guys. You know me as a Fulham super fan. Well. I've always been in the hotel industry and uh, when I came back to this hotel, um, which is in East Croydon, Holiday Inn Express, um, I was brought back to manage uh, the hotel. But during this crisis, when the COVID-19 came along in March, I decided to contact the owner and also IHG, which is an intercontinental hotel group, and basically wanted to take on a, take on a look after the homeless through this time. So, um, and that's what I've been doing during the lockdown period is trying to make a difference to somebody's life and help them. Covid's affected me in very mixed emotions from climbing the walls to thankful to be back in work and also thankful for the NHS for the amount of work that they've put into what has been a total scale of well who would have thought it the pandemic you know it's, it's major and the fact you've got all those people that are working so hard around the clock exhausted and yet they work so hard to try and help everyone each and every one because we know thousands of people here have been affected not just in London but the UK and worldwide and for that we thank the NHS for the hard work I mean my company they started a quiz we did two quizzes and we raised funds for the NHS because we felt well everyone needs to stand up and appreciate the NHS you've got people in America they're getting bills left right and centre so this is where we have to be here. So thankful in England, we don't have that issue. We've got the NHS, we've got these people that, from all walks of life, they're willing to help and do everything they can to uh, help those that have COVID. So thank you. Uh, so I'm a student at LSE. Uh, I'm in my final year. Um, so it was back in March, right? Uh, I, was, um, I was actually at Bristol City away. And then I was on the coach back with my with my mate, and we were like planning uh, all the different games we're going to go to uh, for the like the final run in. So after Bristol, I come into uni next week, and then they uh, they start. There's some rumours going around about how uh, there's um, oh they might have to start closing down the school. Um, apparently, all the like head of departments they all had a meeting about whether they should have closed that week, um, and then and then. Like that's the first time people start talking about it, and then uh, over the next few days, like uh, like coronavirus in Britain, like it started getting like a lot of like news about like how like cases are surging up, and then next thing you know, at the end of the week, they they announce uh, uni's closing down, uh, everything's going to be online, graduations cancelled. When they closed down the school, they had a they had like a, a one week period where it was like okay, everyone would still uh, come in for that one week. Because you know, teachers need—they're not very good with technology here. They're all quite old, so uh, they all like had to like start preparing to put stuff online. And then um, one of my teachers told us to come in that week still, even though everyone else said, "Oh, it's fine, don't come in." And then that teacher ended up having coronavirus, so everyone who went to that class had to self-isolate. Originally, I did have a like um, like an internship opportunity plan, but that got finished. Um, like a third of firms in the UK have said we're not going to do any more recruiting this summer. So what well, they said that yeah we're just gonna have to cancel doing the internship. So I've got nothing planned. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. Um, but at the end of the day, there's still like people worse off than me right now, and like at least I still have my health, which is good enough. How's lockdown been for you? Actually, tell you the truth. Apart from let's say 
missing out on the football on those Saturdays and going away. As you know, I've just done six years solid, over six years of away matches. That was a bit of a shock to the system at the weekends. Um, however, it's been busy for me on the work front. Okay, everyone, and this is my team. So everybody give a wave, wave, <laughs> wave, wave. Because, as I mentioned on my introduction, um, I have a contract with the GLA, the Greater London Authority, that is, um, where, you know, me being a man of faith and always want to make a difference to somebody's life or whatever, I'm sort of aiding in um, housing 130-odd homeless people here that's, you know, to protect them away from the COVID that was happening during the lockdown. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I've been pretty busy on that front, actually, so I've kept going. What what made you decide to do that, Tony? Um, I always look where wherever there's a negative in in going on in in life, I try and find a positive. And as I said to you before, me being a man of faith and having good values, always look to see where you can make a difference to somebody's life. It's always a dream that can help someone, no matter how big or small. I mean, you know, we've had recent respect for the NHS and all the essential workers, you know, during all this pestilence that's going that's been going on. So. Yeah, it was just this was within. You always look to try and help others. And I know at the moment we're talking Black Lives Matter, which is on the forefront. But before that, at the time, I was thinking all lives matter at the time. So it's just the way I was thinking, that was all. Tell me about um, what you found from doing this with all the homeless. Have you found anything interesting, you know, just meeting these people? Yes, because, you know, I've got to let you know that. When you see these people on the streets, they're not all alcoholics or drug addicts. There's people that have had a bit of bad luck in life. I mean, and what happens is, you know, you have a bit of bad luck, could be anything, and then you have a domino effect, and next thing you find yourself on the street. I mean, there's ex-military people here fought for this country and all sorts, you know, when you talk to the people. So it actually puts a lot of things into perspective, and it actually makes you think how lucky and appreciate the things that you have yourself, you know, when you actually speak to them, listen to the stories. And... I served in the 2nd Battalion Parachute Regiment. Uh, my name was Corporal Robinson. Uh, I served two tours of Afghanistan, one of Iraq. I was finally injured in uh, Operic 8, where I lost most of my vision in my right eye, uh, pins in my right ankle plates in my left arm, so I was medically discharged after serving a little while in recruitment. And, uh, yeah, and this is... Uh, after I left the army, I spent nine years in the parachute regiment. Uh, I then became a qualified welder fabricator in St. Force due to Corona. I think I spent a lot of time in the house with the missus. And, uh, that didn't go down too well, so unfortunately, the uh, relationship broke down. And I ended up here. Uh, and been on the streets is it's an amazing eye-opener to the fact that it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter who you were it, at all. You just get tired with the same brush of everyone assuming drunk, alcoholic, a, a drug addict, a user. Someone that went massively wrong in their life, and believe me, I used to have a 66 plate car, I had a lovely motorbike, a lovely three bedroom property, and it, absolutely anyone can end up here. And you literally, you can't get the time of day off people, and it's unbelievable how society can just cast you away. Well, I mean, okay, it's like, um, okay, I, it's, I, I, I can apply for as many jobs as I like on Indeed on my phone, but I won't get one because I've got no address. No address, no job, no job, no address. Um, Without my address or ID with me, I, I can't seem to sign on because I can't prove who I am. Um, and I, it's just once you've got nothing, you can't get a leg up. You need to have one of those things, either a job or home or benefit or ID, to get anything. And once, once you end up right down and out, you end up with nothing. It's amazing. I go into the councils and they go, are you British? I'm like, Jesus Christ, I know people can be here one thing. I think I couldn't sound more British if I tried. And, I, and it's, it's just unreal. That, just to tick a box or to, to fill a bit in. It's amazing how you can be left here through no fault of your own. And, and once you're here, society just really doesn't care. What's it like here on the streets? Are people kind or...? Yeah, the kind people are extremely kind and they do whatever they can. And I tell you what, the most annoying thing about being down here is those that are in the position to help you the most will look at you like you're scum. And those that can barely afford to give you 10 pence will give you 10 pounds. It's the people who've got nothing that will give you the most. Do you think more footballers should engage in political issues after the success of the Marcus Rashford campaign? 
I think if it's a positive, if it makes a positive impact, then why not? Whether you're a footballer or a man in the street, if you can make some positive impact. I mean, footballers obviously are role models. And as long as it's done in a positive manner, and obviously his was based on his past experience as well, where, it, where his own life of ground roots from his lifestyle came. So um, from that perspective, why not? Um, as long as it, things don't take out of proportion like the media do, like I saw the paper the other day, Rashford for Prime Minister, can he sort Brexit this? That's when it gets a bit ridiculous. But from an actual positive perspective, then yes, good luck to him and well done for coming out. With, it's going to help a lot of people. Absolutely a lot of people. So from that perspective, I'd say, yeah, it's fine. Um, I think it's really good. Like, we don't, like, we hear about a lot of, like, negativity and it's like, you see how, like, toxic it's been. Um, so, p positive stories like this, like, they're quite, you know, they're, it's a feel-good thing for what's been, like, a really, like, bleak time. And, like, we've heard so many stories recently about, like, oh, all these people that have done, like, really good things are oh, that, that old man who walked around his garden and then uh, he raised, what, 15 million pounds for the NHS. Um, this was my friend's uh, head teacher from back in sixth form. Uh, he had an interesting story himself. Uh, he, he was a lawyer, he worked on like multi-million pound deals and then one night he decided this isn't what he, what he wanted to do, he wanted to do something meaningful so he set up a, 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 a sixth form in, um, in East London for underprivileged students and uh, the year I came into this university, it was one of the best in the country for a -Levels. Is it going to be strange not going to Craven Cottage? Yeah, because I go to, I'm a season ticket holder, so I go to, I've been to all the home games this season. I've been to about, I'd say half the away games this year. Um, so, yeah, like I was going to, I had like a plan to go to like all the away games, well most of the away games left, but um, yeah, we're just going to have to watch it from home. Um, I know, like I know, they had the um, that deal, or whatever, for season ticket holders, where it's just like get all the nine games for like the rest of your season ticket price. But um, you can just uh, just use the um, if you use a VPN, you can just get all nine games for cheaper than it is your season ticket. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I mean, it is has been depressing without any football. Just missing missing the vibe, missing the whole aura of of Fulham. Um, yeah, so. I mean, it's a shame I, c I can't be there. I'll be watching it on TV <laughs> unless I get a parachute with my flag <laughs> as a parachute. But I'll probably end up in the river knowing me. But um, yeah, yeah, I've been missing it. But it, they're in spirit, of course. You know, actually, a bit of a, bit of a change watching them on telly. To tell you the truth. <laughs> so yeah, it'd be a bit of a change for me watching them on telly like that. I'm not used to it. You know, I might have gentlemen Jim as <laughs> have him on the radio as well <laughs> going on. You know, but. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bit different for me, but fine, it's, it's, it is what it is, what can I do, it is what it is. It's going to be feel extremely weird uh, going to watch it on the sky with an empty crowd, and it's like, yeah, you can have two versions, one with crowd or one with just how it is, and I'm thinking, what do you need the crowd bit for, you know there's no fans there? Um, so to me that's just like, yeah, pants. <laughs> Mind you, it will be interesting to see if Parker has a voice. Any Fulham fan that's interested to see if Parker has a voice. Because we know there's some of us that see a lot of his hands in his pockets. How much does he actually shout and actually bark orders? So I'll be interested to see how that goes. Kev, where are we? We're at Buckingham Palace. Why are you at Buckingham Palace? Because I've come here to see the Red Arrows and the French to the fly past our Buckingham Palace. Tell us your history with the aviation industry. Well, the fact that uh, my first time I think I learned I went to an air show, I was about four years old, my parents took me, so therefore straight away I wanted to go in the Air Force. So I did school, failed miserably, then out of school decided to take a uh, aptitude test in Oxford for the Royal Air Force, failed by one mark, and I thought to myself, I'm not going through that hell again, you should get two chances, and I weren't prepared to put myself up there and do it no more, so now I choose to do it privately and become a private pilot, and get my private pilot's licence, and I fly at head corner when I can.
Yes, yeah, so once I complete my flying course, I'd uh, be a big time pilot for the uh, private companies, like Mr. Khan, if he still chooses to be with us at Fulham. Well, to be honest, like, I'm not. I'm not too bothered about the situation because every time I hear about Javier, it's not always good news uh, because of all the stuff he does on social media and it's like, you know, we've all heard about all this different stuff. But he probably is going to become like a really good player. So you just hope that the club can like sort things out, like get the proper legal team in and like just sort it out, get the price that we deserve. Javier, and I would have thought that was all been done prior, when it, before everything went through. That's Again, that's backroom, boardroom stuff. You'd normally think these things are ironed out pre, you know, from any business perspective. But you, you know me. When it comes to things like that, I won't comment too much into that because there are reasons behind everything that we probably don't know. But I would have thought, like anything, it would have been sorted out when the deal's done, sort of thing. Well, to me, in the day, Liverpool got the money, and there should be no ifs or buts. We've given the player player could have been playing for us and obviously his head was too big head was turned very much a bit like Cess you know he wants to play for a bigger club good things fair enough but my personally you look at it this way you buy a house mortgage it and everything else but there is a fee to pay now you can't just say oh yeah you can have the house but don't pay the fee you have to pay the fee end off fee is a fee a deal is a deal there's, there's money on the table you've given it you said yeah you can have a player but we want the cash it's like you go to a supermarket, you don't go and get the goods and not pay, do you? Yeah. Same principles. Yeah, it's just, it's going to be a really weird time. We'll see, like, how the players react to it. I don't know how they're going to feel. Um, like, is it going to be... How, how are they going to play without a crowd and, like, just fake noise? It will be certainly interesting to see which players play to the crowd and actually play for the love of football. You know, they want to play because they love the sport. They love the sport. They played from a kid onwards and pushed on. So it will be interesting to see who the crowd pleasers are and who the ones who actually know. I'm here to play football because I love football. It's my passion. But um, hopefully we'll see like some of the some players that maybe haven't shone as much. Like maybe they'll step up. Like um, we've seen like some good cameo performances from Abu. Um, but consistently, like that's something we haven't seen yet. What we've seen in the Bundesliga, I know that. People have been saying, like, oh yeah, the technically gifted players and the physically gifted players, they've all been doing quite well since the restart because like, not everyone's well adjusted to everything yet. So hopefully we'll see like, players like Abu like, just like, do really well. When you've got faith in your team, you've always got to be positive. Now, obviously this is a very, how can I say, strange state of affairs at the moment because we were, we were on form, we were doing well, we were top of the form as we were going into this unfortunate cease of playing football. Well, our last conversation about the team and everything, it's interesting they changed the tactics a little bit. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's funny. I don't know if Scott was listening to us because actually that, we were top form at, the, at that time and we were going for it and I couldn't believe it. They even played Cabano a couple of times. Tom Kenny, wow, against Bristol. I remember against Bristol, what a game he had. He was attacking more. He wanted it. You know, it was, it's like, wow, is, have they been listening to us? Because we said they just needed to try and go for it now. And we'd seen a bit of a change in the, t in the, in the actual way of play. So, no, I was, I was pleased with that performance that we were coming into it. We were building some great momentum for actually the running at the end of the season. But unfortunately, again, we go back to this COVID-19, just broke it all up. Um, just depends on the mentality now and, and the fitness levels of, of the team. And I hope Scott and his backroom staff can make sure they're well and fit enough and also mentally prepared. They need to be mentally prepared for this to go for it because um, it was a sort of break. Um, and when you have a break, it's like sticking a, uh, something in the cogs. So we've got to get it back together again. Um, get course, I'm always going to be positive, but Anything can happen in football, as you know. Um, you know, but you've got to have the belief. You know, you've got to have the belief. Um, but it's like anyone; all the teams are in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. Um, but you know, all all of us Fulham fans, we're behind them in spirit. And... So I need I need to go to the bathroom, right? And I just see here, this is seven days a week, but it's locked. It's supposed to be the loo of the year. 
clearly fallen in standards. So obviously I have another passion, and my passion as you see, we're in the Lego store. I love Lego, and when you combine Lego and Fulham together, what do you get? You get players, you get stadiums, you get club quests. So since COVID-19, I've been able to really push my business and I've had sales that have just gone through the roof really good and also also gives me a chance to work on designs. So me being a film supporter, we've got players and a new stand, a new cottage. So when I did the old cottage, I included the old stadium with the roadside stand. Now we have the new stand incorporated with everything else and it does look the biz. We also are interested in fans that want the Fulham Dream Team. So if you've got a squad of 11, I can do 11 football minifigures in their kits that they wore at that time, and we can do that for you. I offer you something the club doesn't do yet. I'm hoping to possibly try and push that avenue, but there's a lot of issues to evolve, but you can have these products that I offer now. They're amazing, they're unique, and they're different. So if you're interested, my contact details, the link is in the description below. So, I'm not very good at motivational messages, but it's like, it's basically a reset period now. We just gotta take it game by game, just like, you know, if we can get promotion, we can get promotion, great, automatic. If not, we'll be in the playoffs. Who knows how they'll go, they're very unpredictable. But, we've got the players to do it. we got, like, maybe some players haven't been as good as they can, uh, as we've seen them, like maybe like Knockout, Knockout can, uh, you know, show why he was a championship player of the season back in the day. But you know, these you, these players, they can all, they can all like take this opportunity and like really show that we are a Premier League team. We've got the quality. We've got all this. Not only have we got like one of the best starting 11s in the league, we've got some of the best subs. You can't say that Barnsley or Luton, they don't have any of that. As I said, with the depth thing. Other clubs, they don't have really have any quality depth because, like you know, they're very limited resources. We've got, we've got some of the best. Like we remember how early in the season, like we were like, oh, we have got all these midfielders. Like, how are we going to put them all in the team? Well, now we can. Like, we got five subs now, so we can use them to our advantage because other teams they won't have as quality subs, so they, so and they're going to lack match fitness, and this could be the make the difference between us pushing ahead and like getting to the top. So we'll see, but hopefully we can do it and hopefully we can get promoted.